Okay. Namaste. Uh, good evening, everybody. Uh, this is CR Butter from West Virginia. I hope you all are doing great. Uh, it's my pleasure again to welcome you all to another episode of NPA Colloquium series. Today we have uh, Dr. Ganesh Pokhrel from University of California, Santa Barbara, and he will be talking about uh, tunable magnetic layer in the vanadium based Kagome metals. RV6, SN6, where R is rare earth elements. Uh, let me introduce him in short. Dr. Ganesh Pokhrel received his BSc and MSc in uh, physics from Tribhuvan University, Nepal, and completed his PhD in physics from University of Tennessee. During his PhD, he worked on the synthesis, characterization, and neutron scattering studies of frustrated materials. He is currently a postdoctoral researcher at University of California, Santa Barbara. Thank you. And uh, in addition, he has received a few awards uh, like a Colloquium Award 2015 and Chancellor Fellowship at the University of Tennessee. And he is a life member of Nepal Physical Society and a member of American Physical Society and, of course, ANPA. So let's uh, welcome Dr. Ganesh Pokhrel. So Dr. Pokhrel, microphone is yours. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Bhatta, for the nice introduction. And thank you all for joining. Uh, I appreciate the, uh, sorry, I appreciate ANPA for organizing such a wonderful colloquium series. Uh, today, uh, as Dr. Bhatta mentioned, I work at UC Santa Barbara, basically uh, uh, working on the synthesis and characterization of some quantum uh, materials and carrying out some scattering uh, measurements. Today, I will talk about tunable magnetic labor in a uh, vanadium-based Kagome metals, RV6, SN6, where R basically represents for a rare earth element. Uh, the picture I'm showing you in the first slide is uh, trying to focus on the Kagome structure, which is formed by the corner sharing uh, tri triangular lattice, uh, formed by this like red color ion, which is the vanadium ions. I will come back to the Kagome lattice structure and try to motivate why this structure is uh, uh, focusing these days by a uh, lot of condensed matter physics communities uh, uh, later in the slides. Uh, before going into the detail, let me. Oh, sorry, why the slide? Okay, sorry. Uh, before going into the detail, let me uh, briefly thank to all my collaborators uh, who helped me by different uh, way to continue this project. Basically, the Brandon Ortiz, he is a postdoc at UCSB. He is involved to motivate uh, find, to find a new vanadium-based Kagome metals because he was the person who discovered superconductivity on vanadium-based Kagome metals recently. And after his discovery, within a year in his project, like more than 150 papers were published. And uh, for Sartre, he's involved to set up the DR dilution refrigerator measurements on my projects. Uh, Sam did uh, DFT calculations uh, on some of my uh, compound. Guang Hu, he's a, a lab manager at UCS, X ray lab manager at UCSB. I carried out a single crystal X ray diffraction on his instrument. Jacob Roth is, a, is an instrument scientist at Chase Roth. I carried out uh, X ray scattering, synchrotron X ray scattering measurement on his instrument. Uh, Jun Feng He, he's a, a professor at UCSTC and he helped to, to collect some uh, RPS measurements. Ram Sesadri, he's a PI of uh, SAM and uh, he is mostly involved in the discussion on, of my projects. And Stephen Wilson, he is my uh, postdoc supervisor. Meantime, I want to thank to all my uh, funding agencies and research facilities for providing me a wonderful opportunity to continue my uh, projects. Uh, these are the motivation of my talk. First, I will try to motivate you guys uh, why these uh, vanadium-based compound, uh, Kagame uh, compounds are interesting and why a lot of people are focusing to explore new Kagame lattice structures. And then later, I will uh, I will talk about the synthesis of those uh, materials and do some uh, basic characterization and few scattering measurements. And uh, towards the end, I will talk about the quantum oscillations in one of the vanadium-based Kagome metals uh, uh, with yttrium on the R side. So, uh, uh, yeah, if I get a time, I may talk about the future potential project, or maybe I will skip uh, that that part. 
as I mentioned in the first slide, the Kagami lattice, that is the lattice networks formed by the kernel sharing triangular lattice, as shown in the picture here. You can see the triangles, all the triangles, they are, are kernel shared. And this triangular kernel sharing triangular structure is very consistent with this Kagami basket, a basket with big eyes, which is quite popular in Japan. And, uh, and due to this, like the consistent, uh, the structural type to this bamboo basket, people is starting started calling this kind of lattice structure as a uh, Kagami lattice structure. So, and due to this uh, uh, exciting uh, geometry uh, uh, and the, uh, the the interplay with the, the correlations and topology, we can expect many uh, interesting uh, novel physics on these materials. So, for example, I'm trying to motivate uh, about the magnetism on these materials. Uh, in this geometry, like on the on the corner sharing triangular lattice uh, structures, if the spins are uh, interferomagnetically coupled on all these three uh, uh, lattice points, then uh, the the interaction condition that cannot be sem satisfied simultaneously. For example, if the two spins uh, interact interferomagnetically, the third spin cannot satisfy the same uh, uh, in interaction conditions with the other two uh, spins. As a, as a consequence, uh, the system finds multiple uh, degenerate states. So the, so the material end up with fluctuating ground state, which we call the spin liquid state. And that basically exists down to very low temperature. And we call that as a quantum spin liquid. And in uh, quantum spin liquid, instead of in, in that, in such uh, unconventional magnetic structure, instead of having a single uh, break points, the material end up with diffuse scattering around the uh, the black peaks. Uh, also, in this geometry, uh, the kernel sharing triangular structure, there is a loss of uh, inversion symmetry. So, as a result, there is a significant uh, presence of uh, Zulosinki Moria interactions, which we call in short form DM interactions, which compete with the nearest neighbor exchange interactions, resulting some canting to the spin structures. Meaning that this structure is basically uh, interesting to uh, explore some unconventional non-collinear non -collinear spin physics like the helix structure or, or conical fan-like or scormian lattice structures. Uh, going into the electronic structures, the material exhibits very rich uh, electronic band structures uh, like uh, the, the flat banks coming from the interference effect of 3D orbitals from the Kagami lattice network. Uh, the direct points are the brand crossings, van of singularities uh, in the in the in the uh, band structures, and all these rich electronic structure can be achieved by simple tight binding model with nearest neighbor hopping and exchange repulsion. So in some of these uh, Kagame uh, metals, uh, there is uh, uh, the 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 elements with the F electron system that involved in the structures, meaning that. In, in in heavy electron systems, there is or F electron systems, there is a strong spin orbit coupling. So the inclusion of strong spin orbit coupling in the the systems basically open a gap at the direct points. So in, so uh, the electronic uh, band structure on these materials uh, uh, that exhibits uh, uh, both flat bands like the shuttle points, uh, the direct points, band crossings. Uh, as well as the, the, the gap state at the direct uh, points. And all these can be simply explained by the uh, tight binding model with nearest neighbor hopping, exchange repulsion, and uh, spin orbit coupling. Apart from this, there is a recent uh, uh, observation of churn topological magnetism in one of the 166 uh, magnetic based uh, compound, which shows a churn gap at the direct points, as well as the edge states. Nonetheless, there is a recent discovery of superconductivity on the vanadium-based Kagame uh, uh, materials, which exhibits uh, um, uh, two different domes of superconductivity based on the applied uh, pressures or doping in the system. So, so the, the, the discovery of unconventional superconducting ground state as well as the charge density wave states on the vanadium-based superconductor that motivated us to explore more novel uh, structure on the vanadium based Kagame uh, systems, which can potentially lead us such lead us to uh, find such uh, unconventional uh, magnetic as well as superconducting ground states. So the discovery of this uh, 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 superconductivity, which was uh, uh, on on Kagame metals that happened uh, last year, 
uh, uh, from our group. After that discovery, we, we tried to explore more similar uh, structures, uh, brand name based Kagami structures, which can potentially lead us to similar uh, novel uh, uncon unconventional physics that motivated us to explore more brand name based Kagami lattice structures. So after we have motivations on the brand name based Kagami structures, I try to look for uh, the the literatures if there is any other lit literatures on the on, on these uh, compounds. Then I and then came to a paper around a decade ago, with where they try to uh, 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 look into the crystallography using uh, simply the X-ray diffraction uh, study, but their material was uh, polycrystalline powder with multiple impurities uh, in in their in their uh, uh, bulk sample. You can you can see here the elemental ascent and robust binary V3 ascent phase on their polycrystalline samples. So, but the but the output of their work was quite promising for us because they they observed the right symmetry of uh, one uh, brand name based one six six compound which which. Well, which follows the hexagonal symmetry with pre six triple M uh, 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 symmetry space group, and that is an ideal space group for us to form the Kagami lattice structures. Okay, now we have the motivation, and we realize that one six six compound with the vanadium and the on on, on this uh, uh, on the B sides that potentially give us uh, the right uh, 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 symmetry, which can. Uh, uh, can uh, uh, lead us to the no noble uh, similar superconducting or uh, unconventional magnetic ground state. So after that, I started uh, making the material using a conventional solid state uh, synthesis technique where I use a flux uh, 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 single, cross, uh, single growth uh, technique uh, method uh, and uh, to further uh, for the flux growth technique, I, I mix the flux in the ratio of uh, uh, one is to six is to twenty, and the material uh, and the and the reaction was started or, or initiated at eleven hundred twenty five degrees centigrade. Uh, so after the reaction, uh, after the nucleation begins, I cool down the uh, the materials with the cooling rate of two degree uh, centigrade per hour to seven hundred eighty degrees centigrade and centrifuge at seven hundred eighty degrees centigrade to separate the uh, the flux from the the, the crystals. So after that separations inside the crucibles, there are plate-like single crystals, which I separated uh, and, and, and realized there are some uh, flux contaminations, meaning that there was some tin contaminations on the crystals uh, because uh, from the centrifuge, it was, it was hard to com uh, completely separate the flux from the surface of the crystals. And that is distinctly seen on magnetic measurement as well as the SEM measurements. The 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 superconducting transition around 3.5 k that is not from the bulk sample that is that is coming from this uh, uh, the contamination from the tin. So the next step for me is to clean this uh, the, the surface uh, contamination from the flux uh, tin and then start measurement on this uh, uh, compound. Okay. To ease the acid from the surface or to wash the uh, the flux contaminations, I uh, kept the crystals inside acid, uh, dilute hydrochloric acid for for some days. And and after that, again there was there was some weak uh, contamination which was hard to ease from the from the acid. And and to remove that, I I polished the surface of the crystals. And by doing that, I could able to get the right uh right symmetry with no uh, contaminations to the crystals here i'm showing you the uh powder x-ray diffraction pattern of single crystals that means that single crystal the the x-ray is hitting on the surface meaning that the x-ray is only seeing the the the, the grain or, or or the 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 this oo one surface the uh, where the um which is per perpendicular to the uh, crystallographic C axis. That means perpendicular to O1 directions. So by that power diffraction uh, pattern of single crystals, I could able to see only the peaks along the C directions, O2, O3, O4. That means particular only in one direction, meaning that there is a single grain with O1 uh, surface uh, in the crystals. The magnetic measurement also, there is no more 
uh, flux contamination. I, I mean, like the, the, that, that superconducting transition, which I saw from the tin that is completely irradiated and only the magnetic transition I could able to see on, on my crystals. Meaning that the crystal is good to go for further measurements. Now I have uh, almost pure uh, single crystals. Okay. After I have the data, after I have the single crystals, I started uh, collecting data. Uh, first, I uh, carried out single crystal X-ray diffractions and refined the single crystal uh, diffraction data using a uh, Selex uh, software package. And from that refinement, I could able to get a, a, a pure hexagonal symmetry with P6 triple M uh, uh, space group. Uh, there is a Cagominate of vanadium ions along the crystal surface, which stacks along uh, which stacks uh, along the uh, along the crystal graphic C axis, meaning that the cagomate plane is along the crystal surface and it stacks uh, uh, perpendicular to the crystal surface along the C axis, as shown in the unit cell here. And each unit cell is composed by this R three R three sorry B three SN two or SN B three SN two and SN three uh, layers. And here, this is the top side view of uh, uh, stock crystal structures, and this one is representing the cagominate of vanadium ions. And uh, the last picture, uh, uh, this one is uh, showing you the the uh, rare earth elements, which is also forming a hexagonal patterns uh, along the uh, crystal surface, but is stacking uh, perpendicular to the crystal surface. Okay, then I carried out after the single crystal X-ray diffraction uh, from the local uh, laboratory at UCSB. I uh, start. I ca carried out the single crystal X-ray uh, diffraction uh, using uh, uh, synchrotron X-ray radiation at Chesh. Uh, here I'm showing you uh, the scattering plane HK0 scattering plane and KL0 scattering plane. In HK0 scattering plane, you can see the nice hexagonal uh, back peaks uh, on HK0 or HKL scattering plane. Uh, but in KLO uh, scattering plane, the 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 uh, back peaks are uh, not as sharp as the back peaks which we which is observed on uh, HK0 plane. Meaning that if you compare the, the 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 peaks in these two plane, you can see the difference on the peak intensity as well as the peak width. It indicates that the the black peaks or the uh, uh, the correlations uh, that is obtained by the uh, by the 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 width of the uh, black peaks that is different. Meaning that the uh, the correlations of uh, uh, the plane containing uh, the different lattice uh, points, meaning that the vanadium, tin are, uh, are, are, are rare earth elements. That is, uh, the correlation along the crystal surface is different uh, compared to the correlations uh, perpendicular to the crystal surface. Uh, from the peak width of these peaks, I calculated the, the correlation length, and it is almost the, the correlations along the crystal surface is almost twice the correlations uh, along, uh, uh, along L. On the vanadium based cagomate lattice uh, 135, which uh, uh, which I uh, talked in the motivation uh, sections, uh, those compounds has uh, uh, super lattice structures on 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 uh, that is obtained by the uh, super lattice peaks uh, in at, uh, at low temperatures. Meaning that I try to explore uh, the the structure at low temperature. Uh, thinking that it could it could lead me some other uh, distorted Kagame lattice structure, but uh, the the low temperature X-ray diffraction measurements didn't uh, verify me that the symmetry will be changed or there is an any super lattice structure or super lattice peaks that exist on these uh, compounds. If we compare the peaks at 300k and 10k in different scattering plane, they are almost the same, almost like no change in. Uh, the the peak width or or uh, uh, peak position uh, like no change in the peak width or no no splitting or no appearance of any additional peaks in the systems. I look into non-integer L positions of uh, in 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 uh, in HK zero and HK uh, L scattering plane uh, because I I looked into the non-integer uh, scattering plane uh, thinking that there could be some super lattice structure because the super lattice structure basically that exists in non-integer HKL positions, but there is no super lattice structure at low temperatures. 
I try to scan uh, the L in, in a larger, not only picking a single L or 0 0.5, I, I scan the L from negative two to positive two uh, to capture if there is any other uh, other uh, non-integer uh, uh, super lattice peaks, but uh, you can, uh, there is no any super lattice peaks uh, in non-integer positions, meaning that we do have a uh, stable Kagame lattice structures down to uh, very low temperatures, meaning that there is no any uh, structure which is uh, seen in uh, other vanadium based compounds uh, which, uh, which uh, uh, end up with charge density, charge density wave state that is not exist on uh, on this compound, on uh, on the compound which I uh, measure uh, in, in, in synchrotron X-ray diffractions. Can I ask you a question? Is it okay to ask you ask questions? Sure, in, sure, sure. In, sure. In, in middle, okay, all right. So, why do you think that you you know there can be some uh, these uh, structural distortion? Was there any evidence from other lab based measurement before you going into synchrotron to do this? Yes, there is one uh, measurement I have. I can show you in the later uh, picture. Uh, there was some uh, distortion at like some temperatures, and we didn't know exactly what uh, causes that distortion. And I thought maybe there could be some uh, charge charge density wave transitions because the other vanadium based Kagame metals one three five systems uh, people have like uh, yeah observe the CDW transitions. Then yeah, that motivated us to uh, explore the low temperature structure on these materials. Okay, nice. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, yeah, before, yeah, I will go into that, uh, the magnetization data or other data, which shows one, uh, like, uh, uh, not explore a feature at high temperature. But before that, let me briefly uh, uh, show you the DFT calculations, which uh, motivated us that the system has completely the Kagame, uh, the, the structure, uh, and, and, and that exhibit all the rich electronic band structure that exists on the Kagame materials. For example, the DFT calculation shows there is a flat band around 0 0.5 MeV. There are uh, uh, there are weak surface states around the Fermi labels. Uh, there are saddle points or Van Hoff singularities at the at, at, at M points near the Fermi labels, and there are direct cones uh, uh, near the Fermi uh, labels. So all the rich electronic band structure, which is expected for Kagame structure, they are uh, predicted by DFT calculations on these materials. So well, well, can you can you show me the surface states here? Where what is what's the origin of the surface state in this in this in this material? Uh, I mean they are the the I, I they are the Kagame topological. Uh, I mean the surface states for the for the Kagame structures. Uh, uh, you see, like you know, in 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 uh, you know in edge states like. Like in the the Chon Chon gap, which I mentioned yeah, on the think, starbium magnes, uh, magnesium. We think that's uh, wrong. We think that that is wrong. We think the Chon gap that's published in Nature paper is wrong. You should follow the literature uh, more closely. There is a paper we have put recently in archive. We think that's wrong. Oh, that there is no edge state. You mean? Instead, was observed by STM and, and the, this QCP. You know, they can observe uh, from any other points. So, uh, and that is, uh, you know, we don't think that that's right. There are there are multiple papers now. Okay, but you know, we have seen the surface states on on our measurements too. Like and mm -hmm. other things like this is the DFT calculated uh, the values. Like somehow, yeah, the calculations. This is not I experimentally observe uh, observe. Uh, like the surface states, but the calculations also, yeah, shows very weak, faint surface states on these compounds. Okay, let, let, let's, see, let, let, let's see your, your data. Yeah, the, I mean, the RPS data is very faint, but I, I will go there. Okay. Uh, now I'm I'm uh, showing you the magnetic measurement uh, on uh, 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 three different examples, three different compounds uh, with uh, gadolinium on the R sites, yttrium on the R sites, and the terbium on the R sites. Because uh, I'm I, I try to compare three different elements on, on three different uh, stoichiometry. The reason was uh, uh, I tried to clarify the title of my talk. Because in the talk, I mentioned uh, tunable magnetic layer. So I want to give at least three examples to, to say, OK, there is you can tune the magnetism based on your, uh, your, your, your rear elements on the R sites. So on the gadolinium on the R sites, you can see 
there is a uh, weak uh, antiferromagnetic type of interact, sorry, um, transitions at uh, 10 uh, millitesla uh, field, and it it it, uh, it uh, somehow uh, polarizes or the spin polarizes with the increased field, and you 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 will reach into the polarized state at higher magnetic fields. Meaning that at low magnetic field, you you, you have some kind of uh, both ferro and antiferromagnetic. Uh, the, the the competition between uh, like or both existence of both ferro and antiferromagnetic interactions that led you to a non collinear spin states but at higher magnetic field the spin polarizes with the magnetic field and you will get field polarized ferromagnetic state conventional ferromagnetic states and here i am trying to compare the the magnetization uh, uh, along the the uh, crystal surface and perpendicular to the crystal surface almost there is no uh, anisotropy you see isotropic uh, magnetic behavior on this compound. Now, going into the yttrium on the R sides, when you, uh, when you put yttrium on the R sides, uh, you didn't see any magnetic transitions, meaning that the system remains non-magnetic down to a very low temperatures, like 1.8 Kelvin, which I measured here. And changing the R side metal ion from yttrium to terbium now, the, the addition of terbium on the R sides that that uh, originated very strong anisotropy in the systems. Uh, if you compare the magnetizations, uh, the value of magnet, the magnitude of magnetizations uh, with the field applied perpendicular to the C and parallel to the C axis, the, the value of magnetization along C is almost two order of magnitude is stronger than the magnetization along, uh, along AB uh, crystal surface. Meaning that the system exhibits easy axis, easy axis moment directions with the easy axis along the crystallographic C axis. So if you compare these three uh, plots, you can see that by changing the rare earth element on the R sides, you can play with the, uh, the magnetism or you can tune the magnetism in the systems. And if your, if your uh, rare earth element is non-magnetic, you will end up with non-magnetic ground state, meaning that your vanadium has no role on magnetism on your systems. That means we observe non-magnetic, the vanadium uh, goes into non-magnetic form. So there is no magnetic vanadium in the system, meaning that you can tune the magnetism, tuning the, uh, the rare earth element on the R side. So, uh, here on the, on the field dependence uh, magnetizations, you can see the the moments almost saturates at at one tesla magnetic field and saturate one tesla magnetic field and the saturated moment is around 7.5 mu v which is very consistent with the 4f uh, 7 electronic configuration for gadolinium 3 plus systems meaning that all the moment is coming from the gadolinium not from the vanadium vanadium is 100% non magnetic on the systems on the on the yttrium versions uh, here uh, the field dependent magnetizations, your, your, if you compare the magnitude, magnitude is almost zero within uncertainty, very small value of uh, magnetization. But still, you see some weak magnetic, non uh, magnetic impurity uh, in the systems because, uh, uh, yeah, it looks like somehow some kind of brilliant uh, like uh, function is uh, or, or a little bit uh, instead of like complete linear behavior, it shows a little uh, 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 increase with the low field and somehow uh, after certain field, it increases with the increase in uh, field. But this is very small in magnet, uh, like in, in magnitude. Uh, but one notice you can, one, one thing you can notice is on the magnetizations, you are, instead of having a smooth curve, you see some hump here, meaning that the system has uh, some oscillations at higher magnetic field that we call the has van alphan oscillations or in general term that is called the quantum oscillations uh, on the systems so in the turbium versions again now with the field with the with the easy axis directions moment easy axis directions the moment saturates around 9 mu v and at, at one tesla magnetic field around but uh, along the hard axis directions uh, the 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 uh, the value of uh, magnetization is very small and it it increases it doesn't raise even uh, saturations at seven tesla magnetic field it indicates uh, the the uh, yeah as i mentioned in the uh, earlier it, it it indicates the easy axis moment uh, uh, alignment in the in, in terbium systems and you can tune the uh, tune the now you can tune the magnetism on this rv6 compound by tuning the rare earth element on the r sides Little more explanation, a little more analysis on this uh, uh, magnetic susceptibility or magnetic uh, measurements. This is the inverse susceptibility fitted with the curvewise uh, temperature. It is very the the 
uh, order moment is very consistent with the gadolinium 4F7 electronic configurations and the QDY's temperature is positive. Some kind of ferromagnetic correlations at high temperature you can expect on a gadolinium system. Uh, on the terbium one, uh, uh, you can see instead of uh, having only transition at, at one point, uh, like 4.5 Kelvin, which is ferromagnetic, you, 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 we observed another broad hump around 60 Kelvin on this compound. And we didn't know exactly what is going on on the system, on the systems, because uh, uh, that 60K transition didn't uh, support any, uh, any uh, like uh, magnetic or any other structural distortion. So we, we, were, uh, we, we were suspicious it could be uh, due to some uh, super lattice structure in the systems. That's why I carried out uh, synchrotron axial diffraction, but synchrotron axial diffraction didn't support us that this is coming the, from the structural distortion or some super lattice structure in the systems. Now, from from uh, from the X-ray scattering measurements and from uh, the magnetization measurement, we came to the conclusion that this broad hump around 60k on this compound that is coming from the coupling of magnetization with the crystal field uh, excitations, meaning that there is a strong crystal field effect on the systems that led us. Uh, 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 the the that gives us some uh, uh, excited states. The first excited or any excited state with the energy comparable to 5.5 MeV or 60k uh, close, and that couples with the with the magnetization, resulting some broad hump uh, on magnetization on this compound. Now, in the previous slide, I gave you three examples of uh, our site. Uh, metal uh, elements on the R sides, the gadolinium, yttrium, and terbium. The reason I gave you three different elements was just to uh, explain that uh, you can tune the magnetism by tuning the R side metal ion. Now I'm just giving on these slides, I'll just talk about uh, two elements, one magnetic and uh, non-magnetic uh, rare earth element on the R side. So, um, and it, it shows the, the transport measurements uh, on both of these magnetic and non-magnetic versions. And both of these compounds, both these compounds follows the conventional uh, metallic behavior. It decreases with the decrease in temperature and the resistivity is in the order of micro ohm range, meaning that it shows quite good metallic behavior. And also at low temperature, it shows typical T square dependence that is, uh, uh, that is uh, uh, normally observed in, in metallic systems. Now, uh, and at low temperature, like as I uh, saw in the magnetization data, there was some weak transition in in in, in gadolinium system, and that is even tracked. The magnetic transition is tracked on resistivity measurement also. And here I'm showing you the field dependence uh, resistivity on both of these compound and in magneto resistance. The magneto resistance value is very comparable uh, on both of these compound, but in uh, in 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 resistivity field dependent uh, resistivity, or uh, you can see. Uh, in in gadolinium system, there is a coupling of uh, uh, electronic structure, or there is a coupling of uh, 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 coupling with the magnetism that gives you uh, uh, dip or minima on on at, at particular field, and after that it increases with the increase in field. But in in uh, in yttrium system, as there is no magnetism, there is no coupling, and that means uh, the the resistivity increases with the increase in field. But at high field, as I as I show you on the magnetization data or in the previous slide there was some oscillation on the field dependent magnetization in the same way we see some oscillation on 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 field dependent resistivity also and that is called the subnikov dias oscillations uh, or in general term quantum oscillations okay a bit more about the transport measurements on on uh, one uh, in one of the compound i am giving you just one example now uh, um, for the for hall effect measurements to talk about the uh, the the carrier uh, charge carrier on these compounds, here uh, the I'm, I'm comparing the different uh, uh, Hall effect uh, uh, or Hall resistivity. I can so uh, on 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 this comp on yttrium uh, vanadium sixteen six. Here you saw at high temperatures the the resistivity increases with the increase in field. It shows the linear behavior, but at low uh, at at low temperatures uh, the the uh, resistivity uh, depends non-linearly with the applied magnetic field. So at high temperature, the linear dependence means the material has a single band model, meaning that there is single charge carrier on the systems, meaning that only the electron type charge carrier exists in the system. 
but at low temperature nonlinear behavior is fitted it's uh, is, is is explained by the double band model meaning that the system has both electron and hole type charge carrier uh, that exists at low temperatures so by fitting the uh, the hall effect or or hall signal with the uh, with with two different single band and double band model i could able to track the uh, the field dependence carrier charge carrier uh, uh, carrier density and mobility and as expected for carrier density it increases with the increase in temperature because you you there will be more uh, charge carrier at, at higher temperatures but at higher temperature again there is more collision between charge carrier that will lower your your mobility so it yeah with the increase in temperature mobility decreases but carrier density uh, uh, increases with temperatures now here I'm showing you the band structure which we uh, uh, measure using RPS measurement. As I mentioned, one of my collaborators helped me to measure this, uh, uh, measure the band structure using RPS measurement. Here I'm showing you some weak uh, surface states that is observed by the by the uh, experimental uh, measurements and some uh, weak faint Dirac points and the saddle points. Um, although the Dirac points, uh, the energy scale for the this this band crossing or Dirac point uh, is little uh, different than the DFT predicted uh, the 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 energy values, but all the 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 rich electronic structure which was uh, predicted by the DFT calculations, we could able to track on RPS measurements. And here, this one is uh, we 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 try to categorize the metal uh, metallic behavior on this compound based on this uh, on the on the uh, paratic, uh, uh, topological uh, categorization of this uh, of the metallicity, or meaning that by calculating the G two invariant of parity product of different bands. So based on this, uh, the the G two invariance of uh, uh, different bands. These bands are normally in DFT calculations. They they name those bands by uh, different numbers like one seven one, one six nine, or one seventy three. They basically represents, I guess, the the d orbitals uh, the, uh, on the systems, and they shows the G two invariance of one. So we we categorize these metals as a G two topological uh, metals. Now, till now, I, I talked about the motivations of my compound and then some basic characterizations that is uh, helpful to come some conclusion uh, about my uh, work. Uh, but now I'm going to talk about the quantum oscillations in one of the uh, 16s compound. But before that, uh, I will be happy to answer if you have any questions on the previous two uh, different uh, yeah, topics. If not, I will go to the next uh, uh, outline. Okay. Okay, I think I can go now. As I mentioned in the magnetization data or in resistivity data, there was oscillation of magnetization at higher magnetic field. As well as there is an oscillation of resistivity at higher magnetic field on, on, uh, on yttrium vanadium 16.6. So that we call the, in general term, that we call the quantum oscillation. The oscillations that exist in a physical parameters at higher magnetic field and low temperature, that the, 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 the general name of that oscillation is quantum oscillations. But the, the real name is the, the, for, the, for, for the magnetization oscillation that we call de Haas van Alphen oscillations. And for resistivity oscillations, that is called sumnikov de Haas oscillations or sumnikov de Haas uh, 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 effect. And that is the, that basically exists at low temperature and high magnetic field. And it is, it is periodic with the inverse magnetic field. Uh, and and uh, yeah, only at low temperature and high magnetic field. Uh, before going uh, uh, into the details about uh, the quantum oscillation in my compound, let me briefly uh, talk about these quantum oscillations because I think it will be helpful for everybody for the, uh, to to understand uh, these oscillations before I talk about it uh, about my uh, compound. So this de Haas van Alphen oscillation that was uh, uh, the name uh, the the uh, the magnetization oscillation that name come from this de Haas and van Alphen who are the uh, first person who discovered that oscillations in 1930 when they were 
observing magnetization on a, uh, on bismuth uh, at higher magnetic field and they noticed the oscillations actually uh, van alfan was a phd student and 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 diaz was his supervisor and they were yeah they were uh, the quant the exploring quantum oscillation or exploring magnetization oscillation was not their uh, priority or it was not their focus that was also accidentally discovered by them and then after they discovered uh, yeah to honor them the name it is started call, people started calling it as a diaz van alfan oscillations similarly the sumnikos they have uh, diaz oscillations too uh, but at the meantime when they were uh, they they uh, they discovered these uh, magnetization oscillations or resistivity oscillations in the meantime the other two scientists uh, david soinberg and Leib lando was also working theoretically to uh, to to understand the 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 oscillations or quantum oscillation basically what what lando was doing uh, uh, was he was he was looking into the cycloton orbit in a magnetic field and realize that those orbits will quantize and that that uh, that quantization of those orbits led to magnetization oscillations or that led to the oscillation in in in, in density of states uh, for uh, in the fermi level and that uh, that ultimately caused oscillation in many physical parameters so they did this they, they found the the the, uh, the quantum oscillations or the region of quantum oscillation at the same time when de has and ben, ben alfan experimentally observed the oscillations in 1930s around a uh, 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 century ago or maybe nine decades ago uh, but all the ownership that went to de has and ben alfan or subnikov about the discovery of uh, these these oscillations the reason was uh, uh, yeah, the David Sonberg and 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 Lando was in Cambridge, but uh, that was the situation before the Second World World War was happening, and and the political unstability at that time somehow uh, led the Lando into prison for an year, and David Sonberg uh, to patriot to Russia because uh, David was a was a, a Russian immigrant. Uh, sorry he he was a russian citizen but he migrated to uh, university of cambridge and lander was a uh, as a, a british born but from russian immigrant due to the political instability they couldn't able to publish their work at that time or they couldn't highlight their work the reason was if they highlighted the cost the the people from the custody or some uh, yeah some the the, the police political uh, issues they could lead them more more problems so that's why they hide their issues but they have done a lot of work on quantum oscillations a lot of papers a lot of uh, books david has written like multiple books on the quantum oscillations uh so because of that political issues they were somehow not able to uh, they were not much honored compared to the diaz and van alfan all the contributions about the discovery went to this uh, went to the uh, diaz and van alfan as well as uh, Leib Somnikov, uh, about the quantum oscillations okay uh, sorry for debating uh, from the uh, from the topic now coming back to the quantum oscillations okay why we see the quantum oscillations the basically the quantum oscillations that exist because of the lander level uh, quantizations or the quantization of cycloton orbits uh, in an applied magnetic field so in in low temperature or uh, 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 you have a uh, you have a narrow uh, Fermi, Fermi distribution function so if you increase the magnetic field at that uh, at that moment the the increase in magnetic field has a reverse effect to the separation of uh, lando level meaning that the larger magnetic field uh, separates uh, the 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 lando levels so once the separation increases the lando level crosses the fermi level and once it crosses the fermi level it depopulates so at higher magnetic field it depopulates because it need to cross the land sorry fermi level so if after it cross the fermi level no more no more level will be occupied so the depopulation of land level results oscillations to the uh, the density of states at higher magnetic field so that basically exists at low temperature so why low temperature can can't you see at high temperatures uh in high temperatures what happens uh, like your your fermi function is 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 broad so in a broad uh, Fermi, uh, Fermi uh, function or in a broad regions, so not not a single Lando level crosses the Fermi level. 
when you increase the magnetic field. Many levels that reaches that 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 reaches to this Fermi function. So the depopulation starts slowly. So as a result, the the oscillation is like a background. You can't exactly distinguish its oscillations. So that basically means the quantum the the quantum oscillation that exists at low temperatures and high magnetic field because of the quantization of or depopulation of land levels uh, 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 at that conditions and uh, that uh, that yeah and that exists because of yeah the the the, the quantization of uh, energy levels or cyclotron orbits. So why people why people explore quantum oscillation? What is the use? Uh, one of the use of quantum oscillation is you can map the Fermi surface because, as I mentioned, the, the quantum oscillation that basically comes from the fluctuation of density of states at the Fermi level or, 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 or at the Fermi surface. So that basically helpful to map the Fermi surface. So, for example, in this, uh, the magnetization oscillations, which is periodic on, on inverse magnetic field, so you can you can calculate the periodicity of oscillation. So from that periodicity, you can calculate the surface extremal surface area for me for, for me surface. So you have two periodicity of, of this oscillation. For, for example, on the, on this picture here, you have one 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 periodicity here is small. Sorry, small small periodicity uh, uh, here and another periodicity here, big periodicity here. So from these two periodicity, you can calculate the extremal surface area, and the and, and that represents those those two extremal surface area represents the the neck surface and belly surface of your Fermi surface. So basically, it can be helpful to map your Fermi surface. Not 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 only the Fermi surface you can map, you can also calculate the effective mass of uh, the 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 quasi particle that is uh, re revolve, that is moving on the cyclotron orbits. So how you can calculate the quasi particles? I will go in. Uh, yeah, I I will talk about this in the next slides. Uh, in my in my materials, uh, so uh, yeah, the quantum oscillation is helpful for yeah for many reasons. It can also be helpful to to map the uh, the scattering time uh, in the systems. Okay, I I will talk how you calculate the the quasi mass of quasi, quasi particle. But before that, let me talk about my data and quantum oscillations on my data. So as I saw in the magnetization at high magnetic field, you have you have you see some hump in the systems. So if I zoom in this region, you see some uh, weak oscillations for the field applied parallel to AB uh, the crystal surface, and here the field applied parallel to the C axis. It is little tricky to see this this hump on these directions, but if you zoom on this region, you see some weak oscillation in these directions too. So now if I Convert that into inverse uh, periodicity or inverse magnetic uh, field uh, plotting. You can see uh, I, I I subtracted the linear magnetization uh, linear field dependence of magnetization. You can subtract for the norm, normal conventional paramagnetic behavior. So once you subtract this linear dependence, you, I could able to track this periodicity of oscillations. You can see there is a big period of oscillations. And as well as if you zoom on this region, you see another periodicity of oscillation or another oscillations. And from these two oscillations, you can calculate the, the frequency of oscillations. And from that, uh, yeah, from, from this, the, the periodicity, I could able to calculate the extremal surface area of my, uh, of my compound. And that is, uh, that is here. Now, what about the mass of quasi-particles? So this here I'm showing the 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 uh, the field dependence of magnetization as a function of temperatures. From these field dependence, you can calculate the the amplitude of oscillation. Just just yeah, for any from this oscillation, you just calculate the amplitude of oscillation and you compare that amplitude of oscillation or you fill that amplitude of oscillation with a standard formula. And that formula gives you the mass of cycle, um, cycle mass of quasi particle, or basically the the electron or any other carrier, uh, whole type carrier or electron that is cyclo that is revolving on the on the on the uh, on the uh, the Lando labels. And and in my compound, it is around the mass of 0.2 times the mass of rest mass of electrons. So I could able to calculate the rest mass of uh, electrons too. Okay. Uh, uh, now I am. Uh, I think I am. Uh, I have shown you the the data which I collected, and I talked uh, about uh, some of these uh, the 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 recent 
observation of quantum oscillation on my compounds as well as uh, some uh, strong anisotropy on, on one of my 166 uh, compound. Now, these are the uh, uh, conclusion of my talk. Uh, we I synthesized the single crystals of RB6, SN6 for the first times. And they possess, they possess ideal P6 triple M symmetry with a perfect cagobinate of vanadium ions. And DFT cat categorizes these materials as a G2 uh, uh, topological cagobinate metals with multiple direct crossings, surface states, band of singularities, and near EF. The vanadium sublattice is non magnetic, and the magnetism is controlled by the R side metal ion. Now, controlling the R side metal ion on this compound, we can, uh, these materials, they could, uh, they, they, they appear to be the promising materials for unconventional electronic states born from the model cagominator uh, proximated with the tunable uh, magnetic layer. Uh, and uh, these are the three, or uh, more or less the two papers uh, I cited, and the last one is I am almost ready to submit uh, uh, now. Uh, yes, I am uh, ready for your comment, questions. Uh, thank you for listening. Thank you. Thank you for nice presentation, Kanesh, sir. So let's take some questions. So everyone, please feel free to raise your question if you have any. I have one question, Kanesh. Yes. Nice system, nice talk. Uh, did you? Analyze the the phase, for example, Berry phase from quantum oscillations that can give you some idea about the the topological nature, uh, trivial or non-trivial. Yes, that is a very great question. Actually, I I I didn't do this Berry curvature or calculating this Chon number something yeah which you get from this this, this integration of your or, or calculating Berry curvature and and and, and, and integrating that. Uh, I haven't yes. Yeah, I haven't, I haven't done that. So, uh, no, no, not from theory, even from experiment, you know, you can just map out the land available Venn diagram uh -huh. and get the intercept uh, that can give you the very, very phase in, if it is quantized in terms of pi or, or any other number that land of Venn diagram. If you, for example, uh, one of the, yeah, for yeah, you have two oscillations. You can separate individual oscillations and get construct the Landau Venn diagram that can also give you some idea about this very phase. If, if oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. Yes, cool to know. Yes, cool to know. I will. I will dig into it. I'll dig into it. So one one comment, Ganesti here. Yes. So uh, it seems like you measured up to sixteen Tesla, right? For uh, the uh, fourteen Tesla. Sorry. How how how? Fourteen. Fourteen Tesla. Fourteen Tesla. Yes. So uh, did you did you think of doing it at high magnetic field because then you might get more other um, oscillations as well, and these yes, I... can result probably you know it would be better to you know go up to sixty five Tesla or something like that uh, in these systems. Yes, I am you actually can map out the then then you can map out uh, the Fermi surface, right? Um, did you try mapping out the Fermi surface with these oscillations? Uh, yes, the amount of calculation I use, I I, cal I, uh, I mean, I analyzed or I, I calculated is uh, somehow I showed you like I, I mapped out this this actual yeah, surface. Your oscillations yeah. are extremely weak, right? Your oscillations are extremely weak. Yeah, because my field is up to seven. Sorry, yeah, fourteen Tesla. Yeah. I agree with you. I definitely carrying our high field measurement will be very worthwhile. But what is the issue is uh, our one of the collaborator you might know, Chetan Dital, sir. He wants to do the high field measurement. He wants me. Uh, yeah, he he told me like he want to do these high field measurements, and yes. I think I thought like it would be better to collaborate with him. So I sent crystals to him actually. Yeah, and very, good, yes. very good. Very good. No, yes. it was just just my suggestion, right? right? It is it yeah. is extremely difficult. And um, did you did you try um, doing uh, the um, um, you know DSBA? Uh, I did DSBA myself. You know the up to fourteen Tesla, yeah. Sorry, yes, 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 yes. I yes, SDS like the oscillation was so weak, 
yeah can i show you okay sorry where is the mic oh there is let me show you the oscillations the oscillations are extremely weak you see here so and and, and i was trying to do this but once i talked with the the once chetan approached chetan uh, sir approached me then i yeah yeah i sent the uh, yeah crystals to him and he is more interested to explore quantum oscillations and then i didn't try myself but that was my in the priority list actually Sure, sure. I mean, this yeah. is the thing that the the reason I talked to you about this is that the, the terbium paper seems to be very suspicious. The the one you cited, um, and what what we believe now, uh, based on our measurement and uh, the calculations, very detailed calculations, the the story about churn gap in that system is all junk. They saw very nice os quantum oscillations, and uh, you know um, those quantum oscillations. It's very suspicious. They are published in two papers, uh, those quantum oscillations. But they are very suspicious. Those nice oscillations, it's very hard to see in uh, in SDS measurement. Yeah, but you know what I, how, why I rely, uh, why I rely on their paper or why I cite their paper was, I mean, they have, they have very strong anisotropy on their magnetizations. And yes. that, yes, and they have a strong spin orbit coupling on their system. And the inclusion of spin orbit coupling is always open a gap in the in at the Dirac point or, or 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 like open a gap in the systems, and they they argue that in terms of like churn gap, but exactly this, I mean this, yes, but that's seven hundred milli electron volt above the Fermi energy. Do you know that? Yes, yes. So that is, I mean, not exactly sure at the moment now, but I thought that was. That was real. That's 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 very suspicious. Um, it was nice that they published this in 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 the net, Nature paper, but we think that there is a lot of uh, uh, things that are that are very suspicious in that paper. Oh, okay. Even in and, our and about side. about another question with your with your surface state. When you talk about surface state, do you do you um, you know are you um, Mentioning is that the, you know the the linear crossing as as a surface state. Are these topological surface state or are these metallic surface? State? There can be metallic surface state as well. I think like the that is I'm talking in based on the DFT calculation and these are the actually these this paper which I am equally contributed to first author. I did all these other uh, magnet other major the this RPS part. Uh, I was not the lead author for that one. But based on what they argue on the on the on the paper was like yeah, this is a topological uh, surface stairs. Basically, in the DFT, in the uh, in 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 experimental observation and also in the in the and the, the categorization of metallicity, this region is the the topological surface stairs. Basically, the the uh, when the yeah when the parity product uh, the topological classification they did they they mentioned okay. This sure. is the surface state which we see here, uh, topological surface state. So basically, they are arguing in topological surface state. Sure. Okay. This vanadium system may be slightly different from from the manganese ones. Uh, yeah. I mean, they should be more or less consistent. But you know, yeah. the manganese can yeah, manganese have some mang like moment associated with that Kagame layer. But here, the Kagame layer doesn't have magnetism. Right. 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 Yeah. So, any more questions? Uh, looks nobody. One, no, I'm, I'm kind of grilling. Sure, go ahead. Sure, sure. sure. When yeah. you eat the when you eat the this material with uh, with probably you used um, HCl, right? To eat. Yes. Yes. So. Um, did it not eat the material because it was self flux? Yeah, it was self flux. So, the, the, I mean, even the self flux, the, there was an elemental tin that contaminated on the surface, little right. bit. But, but how would you guarantee that it didn't took the tin off of your sample itself? Uh, tin didn't eat. because it's 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 uh, yttrium vanadium sixteen six, right? Yes, yes. It's tin in I your sample itself. 
yeah yeah i mean what i'm trying to say is like the elemental thing it can kill but the 166 is stable phase, the, the 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 phase is very stable it cannot thin, it it cannot okay, okay, it cannot okay. take the tin out from the 166 uh, stocks up so that 16 is very stable so it didn't go off even in um policing right so you had to eat it uh yes i have to eat it yes i agree yeah yeah i mean policing i mean policing is very helpful but you know some edges or some places there are some tiny corners where you have still some uh still some uh, uh tin contaminator so i need to eat that one even i tried with mercury dissolving tin also <laughs> i see i see i see yeah, there is there is some concern. Um, you know, I, I, I have not done this particularly uh, eating with HCL on this one, but I used to eat these um, uh, 115 compounds with with indiums and there was always concern of how much indium this thing will be taking off of the sample. Oh, OK. Yeah, 166 is very stable, like random. It, it cannot eat any tina. The acid cannot eat any stable stoichiometry. Stoichiometry okay. remains very stable. Only the, the excess flux is 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 is, is to buy. By the okay. good, good to know that. Yeah, but even I try to, I try to. If I have a, some clean crystal, I don't even try to eat uh, the, those crystals too, because uh, because once you eat, uh, I mean, like uh, your 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 metal is contact, is exposed to some acid, yeah, somehow liquid. So it, the surface becomes very not very stable after you eat, uh, like uh, in terms of oxidation. So metal. You, you are scared with the oxidation so they are pretty stable with the with the air but uh, uh, the acid eats the uh, crystals if you expose to air for longer time and and you see some oxidation on the surface you can easily clean that one but yeah it's still it's still if i have a clean crystal i don't eat yeah these are a very difficult system to to do the measurement on especially the transport transport one okay very very good ganesh very good Thank you. Thank you for yeah discussion. Yeah, nice discussion. Actually, that is very productive, fruitful. Okay, we'll take one last question. If anybody has. Uh, yes, go ahead, please. Uh, I hardly can hear you. I don't know. Uh, Ganesh, sir, can you hear Harishi? Yes, I am. I, I feel comfortable hearing, but yes, I'm I'm good. Somebody, some someone has some question, looks like. Can you hear now better? Yes. Uh, Ganeshi, can you hear now better? Yes, yes, I can. All right, okay. Uh, yeah, it's a great, great presentation. By the way, you you presented uh, a lot of things here. This is not uh, my field, but I could see um, the amount of the work you did here. Uh, one, just, uh, um, one question, maybe it's very general to you. Um, so you have these uh, uh, magnetic fields, right? So uh, depending upon this uh, RE rare earths. The orientation is different. So the system is gapped here or no? Because of the you have off the plane magnetic field that could probably open up the gap in the system. We expect gap system because this magnetism and, and, and these F electron systems basically we think that there is a strong spin orbit coupling and that opens the gap. So we expect we haven't ma measured the gap, but you know in the even in the DFT calculations you see we see very weak weak gap. Uh, yeah, the, I mean like extremely small uh, gap so i expect some yeah if i uh, yeah measure it should be the gap system basically the magnetic one on the r side and why dft shows uh, so the small gap uh, which is probably even i don't know how much is the gap uh, there in the dft that could be within the inner bar of the dft even how much is the dft gap you see there i don't exactly we don't, in magnitude we didn't say anything but when, when we cate categorize the metallic behavior on the systems, like in, at that time, we I think the, the person who did the DFT calculation, he took an account of the gap in the system, like how, how, how big the gap, and, and then 
after that he categorized the metallic or say g2 topological or he calculated the g2 topological invariance so but in the text when you write i don't exactly remember how much that gap but there is a very extremely small gap based on the dft calculations but yeah even as i mentioned like they are F electron system. So we, I expect a strong spin orbit coupling, which I haven't calculated, or I haven't measured it, but uh, that basically opens a gap on this on the systems, Kagame system. So it, this would be the, the the gap system when the magnetic element on the R site. Uh, you had that uh, a snapshot of the measurement somewhere, right? The oh, yeah, 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 yeah. So, uh, is there anything you could tell about that? Or... Uh, yeah. Nothing. The no. gap is like here, direct point, you normally expect gap, yeah? Dharma, like, uh, or even, even, even I don't know, that in, in DFT calculation, it says the gap yeah, at near yeah. EF, but here, in, in experiment, we see this uh, point quite lower than the Fermi level. In DFT, it shows the gap around the Fermi level here, but in, in experiment, we are we are seeing that little lower than the, the DFT predicted uh, the values. So, uh, I mean, it's hard to say me like what is the 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 gap value here or how much yeah here it doesn't look like exactly gap this uh, your direct point is below way below the forum level yeah, yeah direct point is experimental data way below than the fermi level but dft calculation tells that it could be close it should be close to uh, where is that yeah close to fermi level yeah you have direct point here k point because you have self-doping in your sample, right? So your Fermi level can be different. Um, uh, this calculation is charge balance system. Yeah, and but when you grow materials, it can be charge imbalanced because of self-doping. You're using tin as a flux. So, you know, there can be some, some, some sorting. Yeah, so as soon as you have a dope, dopant, so you create a, a, a impurity states, which will basically, you never know how, where the gap, where the gap is still appears or these impurity state will just fill up the, um, you know, as come as a mid gap states to, to make it more like a metallic or, topological it's a pretty uh, difficult to say in that way but, yeah uh, yeah so these systems are uh, good metals first of all these are not like topological right. insulators type of thing right these are you know you can see the bands all over the place right yeah uh, it's a, you know the, very complex. the question what i think Ganesh um and and everybody in the community is trying to look is that what happens if that uh, dirac cone likes very you know exactly at the fermi surface and if the spin orbit coupling with the magnetism opens a gap, and um, you know the, the the proposed thing with that nature paper that Ganesh showed earlier was that they observed some sort of what they call the churn um, uh, gap and giving the age states the the chiral age states. Uh, but those are controversial still. These are very good metals. Did you submit? Uh, did you push their paper claiming that? something yeah 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 oh, okay yeah. i didn't notice okay sure i will i'll, I'll look into that okay. Mm -hmm. okay yeah there are two papers actually oh i think i i saw the paper but i didn't dig into that quite deeply actually yes uh, we are we are directly fighting with that nature paper <laughs> all right yeah I'm good thanks Thank you. All right. Thank you, Ganesha, for a nice presentation. So we will stop the recording and thank you everybody for joining. So, but we can keep talking informally. <laughs>